welcome if you're new, welcome back if you are not. We are fast approaching a finished lounge and dining room, but as with every room we've encountered so far, or at least when we've got to the finishing stages, there's always those pesky little jobs that need to get done. So join us this week while we get the final bits of this room together. We do those god awful jobs, finishing off the skirting boards and adding those finishing touches that really make a room look I have been working this week, so Tom's definitely taken the lead on most of this. I, I've got to admit I've not done much, but uh, I think the first thing he cracked on with this week is getting an alarm system, which is kind of cool. It feels like a very adult thing to have an alarm system. I've certainly never had one in like a rental house before, uh, but you know, when you put so much work into making this house a home, it's probably best that we protect it. So the first job of the day is to install our new security system um, that I got on Prime Day. So yeah, we got a really good price on Ring. So it came with multiple motion sensors, multiple window sensors, an indoor camera and an outdoor alarm. Um, but when I showed Autumn the outdoor alarm, she was like, you're joking. This is the most ugliest thing you could possibly have. I was like, it's just it's an outdoor, it's just an outdoor alarm. Um, but yeah, I guess the blue is not the best color, but I guess our house is also blue, so maybe it'll merge in. I don't think it'll be noticed when it's really high up. I'm just going to work, but I think you can all agree, it's disgusting. But it's gonna keep the robbers out, so. So when we started renovating the house, we did start hard wiring all these, um, I guess, alarm systems in place. We could then just install it, but then that kind of fell through because I started looking and basically everywhere now is um, wireless, which is not always the best because you've got to change the batteries. So I was looking online and one of the best ones for like DIY was the ring system. So that's what I've got. Um, so yeah, planned out where I want them. The thing I like about it is that it connects to your app. So you can set the alarm when you leave the house just through your phone. You don't have to type in a pin all the time. Um, so yeah, I'll see how it is. So we got this, indoor camera, and extra sensors, and then the beautiful outdoor alarm. So yeah, I think all this came to 200 pound which was pretty good, it's usually like 380. Um, and for me, I, I did want an outdoor alarm because I think it's just another deterrent when um, someone sees your house and you've got this on the outdoor, it's gonna make a lot of noise. So because we're a terraced house, I think the plan is just to have the sensors at the front. I've got one that's gonna go in the dining room, one that's gonna go upstairs. The two window sensors will go on the front windows. Uh, I don't think anyone's gonna come through the back because there's a lot of guards to jump through to finally get to us. So not as worried about that. And then the indoor camera, that was just an addition. I wouldn't really have that, but I think maybe just we're gonna slot it on the um, shelves in the dining room um, because there is a plug point near that. That was so much easier to set up than I thought. Um, yeah, it's all wireless. I think you change the batteries um, every three years. I think maybe the keypad can be hardwired or again, can have batteries and you just charge it up every seven months. Um, but super easy to set up, all done through an app. You can literally just leave the house and once you leave the kind of geo fence, the alarm will be set, uh, which is really good. And again, when you go to bed, you can just put home mode and set certain alarms. So maybe downstairs, for example. So that was the first task done of the day. Now we'll be going on to the next one. So before we paint the skirting board, we obviously need to uh, use some filler to fill in all the screw holes or just where the two skirting boards have connected. I think when we did it in the past, we, we were using wood filler and what I've noticed over time is that the cracks have started to show again and I think the reason for that is that the wood filler is just not flexible enough. This fine surface filler from Screwfix should do the job instead. So yeah, I think it's already pre-made. I know you can make it yourself. Um, but yeah, it was like four quid um, and the holes were a lot smaller this time um, just from nails. So I think, yeah, we just rub that in, sand that down and then we'll be painting the skeleton balls and architraves uh, with that.
a few hours later, everything's sanded, there is dust everywhere, so I'm gonna hoover it, and then I'm gonna start painting. So with a skirting board, usually when it's carpet, you put the skirting board on first, then you can just paint away. But with uh, laminate flooring or kind of wood flooring, you usually put it on afterwards. I think you can get like a little thing that goes around the side, but I don't think it looks as good. What we've done is laid the laminate first and then put the skirting board on top. It'd be quite interesting to see how to paint that without getting it everywhere, because yeah, I'm pretty clumsy when it comes to paint and spilling stuff. Now I put a piece of masking tape all the way down. So that's gonna be my edge, and then I can just paint and not have to worry about the floor. Hello, editing autumn here. Um, so I'm at work at this point, and obviously props to Tom for doing the alarm and getting everything prepped and doing all of the skirting boards, which I do actually think is one of the worst jobs. But if you were looking at that clip thinking, why does he have masking tape on the floor but not the wall? Because when he paints the skirting board, he's just gonna get white all over the wall. That would be a really good question to ask, so probably gave some stuff away there already, but use masking tape on the wall. So where the old door lining was, um, we're gonna use a different type of primer on that, and that's the Zinsa Bin Primer. So it's really good. So literally you can just whack it on anything. So this has obviously got, it's like lead paint. Instead of sanding it down, we're just gonna put it over top and then we'll be able to paint on that, no problem. Quite like a liquidy paint, oil paint. Um, but it's brilliant that you can literally just prime anything. We used it for our wardrobes upstairs, the fireplace, and it's been fantastic. Literally no paint has come off after using that. So it does help you when you don't need to sand down. Um, so I think what we'll be doing as well with the stairs, because that's made from lead paint, instead of sanding it all down, we're just gonna whack a coat on that on and then put the um, other paint on afterwards. has now been painted and dried and primed and everything and like don't get me wrong there's definitely some older texture but that Zinsa I think it's called primer is just unbelievable it basically looks like a new door when we first took out the door but realized we couldn't take out the door frame or the door lining I was absolutely raging I was convinced it would just look disgusting but once again that primer comes to the rescue I think it's actually a really really nice finish so, until the day I die, I'll stand by the fact that bricking up chimney breasts is the worst job in the world. Nothing will ever top that job, that's the worst job. But, I would say caulking and painting skirting boards and doing all of that is definitely the second worst job. No, that's not, that's not true because... What's, what would you say is... I loved, I loved painting the skirting boards. Well, that's because you took absolutely no care in doing No, I so. didn't. I did. <laughs> I literally was using the foam roller so there wasn't like streaky marks of, um, of, uh, thing. Well, so this isn't the second worst job to you? No, I think it's one of my favourite jobs. In terms of painting, this is one of my favourite jobs. My second worst job is painting. So, I'll give you a little bit of a close-up, but Tom, uh did this for the first time yesterday. Admittedly, he did it because I was so hungover I didn't get out of bed all day, so I, I can't really complain. However, I'm going to. Um, he didn't use masking tape. So he's A, got loads of white paint on the walls, but B, hasn't painted the top of the skirting board white all the way across. So we've got a little bit of touching up to do. So I'm shaking his head behind the camera. You don't need to paint the top because you cork it, so that hides Okay. The discolour. I know what we can do. I guarantee it. That's fine. Let's uh, let's make this interesting. Yeah. I'll cork one section. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And we'll see if it needs yeah. to be painted. Cool. For sure. Well, I'll give you the cork now. Want some money on it? Yeah. Also, I don't know if there's any uh, damp experts out there that could help us. The paint is not sticking to the wall, and I'm assuming that's something to do with damp. 
Um, it's only in various spots on, on the back wall that we share with the neighbour. Um, and I know speaking to the neighbour as well, they've also got some quite bad damp issues their size. I tried to alleviate the issue by yeah, making sure the DPC, the damp proof course, was completely clear. Um, so that was like in the Victorian houses, they have slate that was completely removed from any dirt or dust on them. Um, and then for an extra precaution, I then shot the wall. Um, again, wasn't sure if it was meant to work. And then when we plastered, I used this, uh, I think, Seeker mix that again is meant to help with damp. Um, but it still, yeah, just appeared on that wall. Um, I think one of the reasons potentially is because we have just plastered. Um, on a solid brick wall and obviously with the old properties you should use more breathable material It was already plastered with a bonding agent, but that was all removed off and then we did just use cement um, And sand back on the wall probably not the best thing to do But to use a lime and uh, mortar mix was so much more expensive You needed to get certain paint and I just didn't think it was definitely necessary. I thought all these other um, kind of all these other solutions I've tried to put in place to prevent that, but obviously that hasn't worked. But again, this is just like a learning curve for us. This is our first house. So yeah, just, just a learning, but yeah, I may be completely wrong. Maybe it's not damp. Um, it's just really strange because it's just the paint does not stick to the plaster. Um, so yeah, if anyone knows, please let me know in the comments below. Just an update on the peeling wall that Tom spoke to you about earlier as well. It's definitely not perfect. As you can see, there's a lot of texture from where the different layers of paint have peeled away, but we used another one of those Zinsa products. We used the Zinsa primer, which I literally just raved about, but this one is the Zinsa Peel Stop Clear Binding Primer, and it's meant to stop peeling or cracking, and uh, <laughs> it looked like it worked, because that's exactly what it did. It's the weirdest thing. It's like when the paint goes on, I'm not talking about the primer, but the actual paint that we use to paint the walls, the whole area kind of bubbles, but then it settles down again. It's almost as though moisture is getting underneath the previous layers of paint. It's just the weirdest reaction. Um, I don't even think it's damp now, but yeah, as Tom said, if any of you have a clue, let us know. It's all very confusing, but at least it looks a lot better now and uh, is starting to resemble a regular wall. So we are doing work on the house today, hence why everything's a mess again, but as you come into the dining room you can see this kind of huge blank wall and although the lights are very cute there's just a lot of space that needs using so the goal for today is to put some pictures up but it's quite a big wall and we've got quite a few different pictures so we've actually cleared the garden uh, patio area so that we can start laying them out in different configurations and see what we like best before we start making holes in the wall so Let's have a play with the art we've got. All of the prints are from Decenio. Um, as you guys might have seen a few videos back, they did actually gift a bunch of different art. And whilst I was choosing, I did choose some to go up in the living room as well. So we've got all of those now. They're now all in frames. And we're just going to have a play uh, with some positioning. If we basically just pretend that this is that wall and we can have a play with how we want them to look. So I think this is the collection or like uh, positioning that we've settled on. I don't know how well you can see this, but we basically just did a whole bunch of different variations, taking pictures of them and then decided what we liked. And about this one, I like the symmetry. I like that it kind of goes big, big, big. And then you've got smaller ones in between. I like that there's some portraits on landscape. I mean, about the prints, I love them, but I don't know how well they all look together. Um, but then I also feel like if they were just all from the same kind of line, it would look too same same. So anyway, I mean, we'll stick with these for now. And as I spend more time looking at prints and, you know, finding art over time, we might swap a few of these things out. But I think for now, it's a pretty good starting place. Now, however, it's about getting them on the wall, straight, symmetrical and looking good, which is like a whole other challenge. Okay, so we've just set up the laser level. You can see that now it's perfectly in the middle of the table. And so that we'll do all of the pictures around that.
So there it is, the gallery wall. I think it looks really good. You've obviously got the dining room area there and you've got your low hanging lights and then you've got your paintings. I love that as you walk into the room, you immediately see the mirror. So you're kind of like part of the art, which maybe sounds weird and incredibly self-obsessed, but I think it's cool. I don't know. I like, I like how it looks. And with that, we are almost done. We have a couple of last minute bits that we want to do, but I think that's basically it for the lounge. We need to save up to do some extra bits like change the windows and get shutters and all of that, but those are just gonna take a little bit more time and a little bit more saving. But I think the vast majority of the lounge is done. And so please do hit that subscribe button if you would like to be around next week when we do our final lounge and dining room reveal, as well as a summary of everything we've done to these two rooms over the last year and a half. I've started to put the video together this week and it really is a journey, let's just say. Now we just need to do our final touches, the last bit of soft furnishings, the lamps that we want, uh, to really bring this room together once and for all. I can't wait to show you next Wednesday. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.